Hello everyone, I'm Marina and this is Sacramel School. What shall we do if a client has badly beaten nails? Many masters get scared and refuse such clients, but it seems to me that we should make any hands beautiful, trying our best. I have been looking for such a model for a long time, found one, and today we will have a total transformation. Let's get into it! These are the nails I have for today's transformation. Very short, bitten, wet palms, wet nails. The model complains that nothing holds on her nails, neither gel nor aqua gel. The only thing that she wore once was the acrylic system. Today, we will try a slightly different method. I will show you all the nuances of how to work with such a nail plate correctly, what we can do to make it last longer. It's going to be really exciting, watch the video till the end. By the gloss of the nail plate, and by the way the proximal nail fold looks, we can say that the nails are wet. So what we need is a good dehydration to dry them. The first step is to open the pocket. I go into one sinus with a stick and gradually begin to open it with lifting movements. I'm doing it with an orange stick, not a pusher, because on such a spreading cuticle, a pusher can often come off and cut the skin. I like to use a pusher in order to remove pterygium from the nail plate. It is well sharpened and does an excellent job. Using the pusher, I right away try to remove maximum skin, so that I work less with a knee file, so as not to drill through the nail plate. Such wet skin will simply clog the drill bit, and it makes no sense to leave a lot in front. While removing the cuticle on the middle finger, I saw that there is already a red area. The capillaries are very close, so our first mission for today is to try at least not to injure, and the second one is trying our best with transforming these hands. Before filing with a red flame e-file, I apply talcum powder to the cuticle, to the skin around it, in order to dry it so that the drill doesn't get clogged that much. Just like that, I build in talcum powder under the cuticle, and now I actively brush it out. It works, the skin dries up. For removing pterygium, I chose a red flame drill bit, because the skin is sensitive, and if I go with a blue one, there is a good chance to injure. I set the speed to about 15 to 17,000 revolutions. It will depend on the power of your e-file. Forward position, I remove the left side of the cuticle, sinus, and lateral fold. I'm using a tip of the drill. Very often we can see that young girls have such nails. Because the skin is wet, hangnails appear, they start tearing them off. They often have lots of stress, for example, studies, exams. And this habit of biting nails is often the result of some stressful situations. In this case, I highly recommend the client to have their nails done regularly. It had better be a hard nail strengthening, for example, with gel, acrylic, aqua gel, so that gradually the nail plate grows back, the hyponychium grows, and then the natural nail bed will widen. Being a teenager, I struggled the same. Bit my nails, and only doing sculpting and nail extension helped me to grow them back. If we see deep hangnails, then we'd better not polish them with the e-file. First, cut them off and only then polish. I removed the remaining gel from the nail plate with the same drill bit. Done with the left side, now turn off the speed, switch the direction of rotation and start working with the right side. At this stage, I place the drill parallel to the cuticle, smoothing it and cleaning out the sinus and the fault. I know that many nail techs are worried to deal with such troubled hands. They often refuse the clients, but it seems to me that there is no need to worry. Just work slowly and be careful. Even in such case, the client will already be grateful to you. We are buffing the surface, not getting to the skin. My buff looks a bit trashy, as if it was shot with a gun, because the skin was constantly clogging the drill. I'm buffing the skin, getting to the lateral folds to remove the freezy bits. We lifted the cuticle and I need to cut it. Now I apply some more talcum powder. I see that my model's hands are wet again. I guess it's because she's a bit worried. For cutting, I use scissors from Stalix. And mind that I work very carefully, in small portions. I watch the client's reaction. 
closing the scissors to the middle, and if suddenly it's uncomfortable for the client, painful, she goes, ah! I stop and don't cut further, turning the finger towards. During the first procedure, your manicure may not turn out as deep as you'd like, not as clean. But you don't need to be a perfectionist now, and once the manicure is being done regularly, we will see that it gets cleaner and cleaner. On the middle finger, where there was a red area, I reach it, and at this place, is it okay? With every single move, we ask the model if it hurts. We carefully pass this area, and then we cut off the rest. Those of you who also held their breath with me, give a thumbs up. On the proximal nail fold, I cut off the hangnails really carefully. Here it's important not to overdo, so they don't go further. On such a cuticle after cutting, you can see that the lateral sinuses are not all clean. You can finish them off with the e-file. After the manicure, we can see that the nail plate has already changed and become longer. This is how the nails look after the manicure. We washed off the dust. I must admit that in one place I injured the capillary a bit, but it's not that visible. So the clean cuticle operation was a success, I guess. Now I'm degreasing the nail plate and applying all the necessary preparatory materials. The next step is to apply a solution that dehydrates the nail plate, a dehydrator. Do it quickly, you can get on the skin, and if we see that the dehydrator evaporates slowly, that means that in this place the nail plate is wet, and it can be applied up to several times. After dehydrating three times, we see that the nail plate has turned white, which means that it has dried. I apply an acid-free primer that improves the bonding between the artificial coating and the natural nail plate. It's important to apply a small amount. Do not layer it with a brush on the previous step. For such nails, you need to choose the right base coat. I choose an acidic material, flexible, so that it would hold on well. I'm not applying it with a brush from the bottle. Using a separate brush for gel sculpting, I get a small amount of the material to the brush, and with such rubbing movements, tap in our base. We do it this way so that the base penetrates between the scales of the nail plate and adheres better. I send it to the lamp to cure for 30 seconds. We will be sculpting on forms. I took those that have a flat window. We even need to make it flatter. But still, it's very uncomfortable to adjust the form. It just strives to go up. Here, it doesn't go with a hyponychium at all. We will use the following life hack. Get some gel, in my case it's a transparent gel, with fiberglass. Put a small amount of gel on the free edge and on the skin, imitating the continuation of the nail. Don't worry, the gel will not stick that strongly to the skin, and you will separate it later. I send it to cure, I do the same thing on the pinky finger and the middle finger. The index one is pretty good, so I just put a form on it without additional lengthening. And cure all. Now, with the help of an orange stick, I separate the gel from the skin, and such an air pocket appears. You don't need to completely remove it. The most important thing is to create such a pocket for adjusting the form. Now we adjust the form to the extended nail, marking with scissors where we will need to make cuts for the lateral folds because they are very voluminous, and the area of the cutout, respectively, will be big. By the way, another life hack, if the forms do not stick on your client, they constantly fall, you can take a dehydrator and treat these parts. The skin will dry out, and the form will not fall off. Using scissors or an orange stick, I push the form under the nail and begin to squeeze, as I would do for an almond. When viewed from the top, we should see a triangle. Then the nail will turn out visually beautiful, narrowed. Continue modeling. With the same gel I make a free edge. With such a short length, we can't make long nails. We do approximately one to one, and the free edge will be equal to the length of the nail bed, or maybe a bit longer, for our almonds to look like almonds, not ovals. The underlay should be thin and even. We can see that on the sides it's all close with the material. So send it to the lamp to cure for 30 seconds. It's a bit tricky on the index finger. Now I adjusted the form to the hyponychium, and you see, the nail goes higher. So I adjusted it right to the skin. 
If I put it under the nail, then the shape would go up. The nails would turn out uplifted. I continue to lay out the underlays. The most difficult thing for the tux is to cut out this part correctly, so that it attaches like a puzzle to the natural smile line. Separate the forms, take them off, we are done with the underlays. Now we need to build up the architecture. I apply a thin layer to the entire nail plate. I work carefully so that these hairs do not touch the skin. I get the necessary amount, put a drop to the nail, spread it in the cuticle area. Here we need to build up the highest point a strengthened stress zone. At the free edge, we have little to no material. You can help yourself in building up the shape with a thin brush. This is how the nails look with the material on them. Our highest point now is in the central part of the natural plate. If the nails are flat, then it's clear that at the slightest impact they will break. In some places there are leaks. That's because these acrogel hairs touch the skin and the gel drip there. But it's okay, we will drill them out. Remove the tacky layer and start filing. In those places where you can't reach with the file and where you are afraid to fringe the manicure, we can use a drill. I have a ceramic white one. Viewing from the top, I'm shaping almonds. Then I put the finger to the side, filing the lower parallels. When the nails are bitten, short, it often happens that the lower parallels go up. And this is quite normal. We could not lower the shape even more. If there is little material between the natural nail and the free edge, then in this place it can break. I start filing the surface. I make long strokes from left to right. We barely file off near the cuticle. There is a bubble inside. I hate when that happens. So I drilled it out with a drill bit and added some more material. Dehydrating the nail plate, removing the remaining dust, in addition, I dehydrate in the cuticle area, so that the color would not leak. We've chosen a dusty purple pink shade as the main color. I try to apply it carefully near the cuticle, without leaks. I'm using a thin brush to paint close to the cuticle. Now send it to cure. I'll cover the pinky finger with golden glitter and make a slider design on the ring finger. We've chosen the design. Now put it on a cotton pad socked with water. I'll attach the slider to the residual color dispersion. Wait a few seconds for the paper to sock with water and then the slider will easily come off. It's more convenient to carry the slider with a silicone stamp. I'm pressing it down, releasing the stamp and smoothing it with a silicone brush. Now cover all the nails with a medium layer of a glossy top. Turn the hand over so that the top could level. I think our transformation was a complete success. Give this video a thumbs up if you like the result. Transform the hands of your clients so they are always the most beautiful. Success in your work! Bye-bye!